Oh, hi students. Here's the notebook for investigation for week one, fossils in time. What are we learning about this week? A fossil is any remains, trace, or imprint of a plant or animal that was preserved in Earth's crust. The fossil record represents what we know about ancient life and is constantly refined. Index fossils allow rock layers to be correlated by age over vast distances and geological time extends from Earth's origin to the present and is measured in millions and billions of years. Why is it important to learn about this? We've learned that the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. The earliest human ancestors appeared only 5 to 7 million years ago. So how do we know about Earth's processes before humans? Fossils! They help us understand the history of Earth, and they help us determine the geological age and environment in which they're deposited. And our project is coming next week. It's a comic strip about rock layers. So the first part of this is all about fossils. So what is a fossil? And I started you off here. I said an organism dies and is covered up by sediments, then it compacts and cements into the rock. Here are three great examples of fossils. So you could have a plant. Um, this is an animal called a sea lily. Looks like a plant, I know. It's a prehistoric animal that was a filter feeder that got wiped out in the Permian mass extinction. And this is a trilobite, I think. It also kind of looks like a fish, but I'm pretty sure it's a trilobite. <laughs> also got wiped out in the Permian mass extinction. So these are cool ancient life forms that are no longer here. Why are fossils important to geology? They tell us about organisms that in, existed in the past before humans were here. So what you're going to do next is you're going to click on this video, fossils, and observe eight fossils. They're labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I think. And <clears throat> you're going to try to identify them using the fossil identific identification guide in your book. So you'll observe them, you'll record some observations about them, hit pause. So for A, description observations, it's tan, it's not going to be all caps. Looks like a shell. Ruffled. Maybe it's limestone. And then in order to figure out the organism, I have to use my fossil guide. Click. So in the ebook, I'm going to zoom in using the little zoom in button down here. Does it look like this? Sort of. Let me look at some more pictures. No, it doesn't look like that. Does it look like this? Not really. Ooh, it looks a lot like that. Probably this, but let me just click and see if there's anything else it looks like. No. Mm, not really. No. No. No, not really. No. So there's about six pages. I think it's this. So what is it called? It's called a brachiopod or a lingula brachiopod. Kingdom animalia, that just means it's an animal. And phylum is a group within animal kingdom. It's like a smaller group of brachypoda. So things with, usually things with shells that look like a clam are called brachiopods or brachiopoda. I'm just going to say brachiopod in my notebook. And then I'm going to grab a picture from the, I guess I could take a screenshot of that, but I think what I'll do is I'll just grab a screenshot of this. So control shift window key, draw your rectangle, and then just click on copy to clipboard so you can just paste it in. So if you copy to clipboard, it'll give you that option on your Chromebook. Copy to clipboard, and then control V, you can paste it in. I personally can't Control V because I'm not on a Chromebook, so I have to upload from my computer. I insert the image, upload, and that's what I do. So I'll do that for the rest of the fossils in this video. I'll just keep watching. 
and do the rest. Okay, that's what you'll need to do. Oh, what? blank page. Okay, geological time. What is it and when did it begin? Uh, geological time is basically Earth's history all the way back from when Earth formed. So it goes all the way from when Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago to the present day. This is a geological timeline here in purple. And you're also going to see a video of a geological timeline, which is to scale. So it's a little different and a little bit interesting. This timeline just shows the major eras and periods. It also shows the epochs and the ages and millions of years. Um, so what is geological time? Um, a timeline starting when Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago until it ends with the present day at zero. Zero billion years ago. <laughs> Where would your lifetime show up on this scale? If you're talking about a scale of 4.6 billion years, where's your lifetime? Basically zero. Let's take a look at the video. Because we need it to answer the next few questions. So here's 4.6 billion years ago on the left, and zero is today. So Homo sapiens, 40,000 years ago, it's basically still at zero. Homo erectus, 1.6, that's basically still at zero. Ice age begins 2 million years ago, it's basically still at zero. Primitive humans, 3.5 billion years ago, and that's basically still at zero. First horses 60 million years ago. Okay, we can see that line over here. Dinosaur extinction 66 million years ago. It's not too far away from zero, is it? It's pretty recent. First birds 150 million years ago. Okay, right there. First true mammals 220. Kind of looked like a rat. Age of dinosaurs, Mesozoic era begins 245 million years ago. Not that long ago, if you look at the timeline. First amphibians, 360 million years ago. First trees, 385. Right here now. First insects, 400 million years ago. First land plants, 475. First fish, 500. Oldest complex organism preserved as fossils. So this is sort of like animals, when animals started to evolve. But before that, there really weren't any animals. You have to go all the way back to when algae formed, all the way back 3.5 billion years ago, and first life 4.1, so that's just bacteria. Earth takes form 4.6 billion years ago. So when you look at the timeline, it's pretty strange the way that there's so many things that happened very recently on the timeline, and there's so very few things that happened through this time period and going back to the beginning of Earth. There's a huge gap between when algae starts pumping out oxygen and animals start to evolve. Before algae, there really wasn't oxygen in our atmosphere. So still, it took a long, long time before animals make their way to the scene. And then just an explosion of life and several mass extinctions occur during that time too in the recent history. So go ahead and answer the rest of these questions. 
How do we break up 4.6 billion years? You'll probably need to pause so that you can answer those questions now. But we can, once you're ready, you'll do this next one. If you look at how it's broken up, you're going to see that there are big blocks of time broken into eras. So the Precambrian era is a huge block of time where nothing really was going on. like about 4 billion years. And then you have the Paleozoic era. Paleozoic means ancient life. Mesozoic means middle life. Cenozoic means modern life. So we're in the Cenozoic era now, and that's broken into periods. Quaternary, Tertiary, Cretaceous, Jurassic, remember Jurassic, age of the dinosaurs, Triassic, Permian, this is where the mass extinction occurred with this big black line. Pennsylvanian, Mississippian, Devonian, Silurian, Cordovician, Cambrian. So what are we meant to notice here? Well, geological time is broken into eras and periods. What determines an era? Basically life forms that were alive and then they usually ended in a mass extinction. So the Paleozoic ended in the Permian mass extinction which wiped out 96% of all life on Earth. 96% of all life on Earth wiped out. What if you were that 4%? Uh, then you have the age of the dinosaurs. So after a mass extinction, now we have an explosion of different organisms that start to evolve and diversify. So after the mass extinction that ended the Paleozoic era, when a lot of sea life got wiped out, we have organisms taking over on land, and those are called dinosaurs. And the Mesozoic era was the age of the dinosaurs, right? At the end of the Mesozoic era, we have another mass extinction that wipes out the dinos. What happens after that? In the Cenozoic era, you have mammals exploding and diversifying all over the globe. So after each extinction, there's also a massive diversification of new life. So let's go back and we'll type, um, we break, it's broken up into eras and periods. Eras are based on life forms and mass extinctions is when they end. Periods are based on generally fossils and, and rock layers that have been discovered from those time periods. So like the Pennsylvanian period is named after a rock layer in Pennsylvania that has lots of organisms from that time period. It's kind of weird. All right, in order to figure out how old the Grand Canyon rocks now and to put them on the timeline, we have to watch this video, which is just going to show us how old the, the rocks are. So let me make this bigger and pause. So you see, it's putting the layers of the Grand Canyon onto the timeline. We know that the top layer of the Grand Canyon is Kaibab. So that's going to be the youngest layer. And the rest of them are going to go back in time. And they're going to be even more million years ago as we go down the deeper, deeper rock layers. So Kaibab was in the Permian. So you needed to type in Permian. Tora Weep was in the Permian. So you need to type Permian. Cogonino, Permian. Hermit Shale, Permian. Supai group goes from the Permian to the Mississippian. Redwall limestone is Mississippian. Temple Butte limestone, Devonian. You'll want to pause this probably so you can fill that in. And then there's a huge gap in time where there are no layers, which is a very strange geological mystery. Cambrian is Moab limestone, Bright Angel Shale, Cambrian, and then Tapit sandstone is pre-Cambrian. So you probably need to pause that and fill those in. Okay. And here's our final step. It's about index fossils. 
So you should probably fill in this definition for index fossils. They're very special. Index fossils are special because they're found in only one rock layer. Which means they only lived during a relatively short period of time. The other thing about them is that they were widespread. So they were they were maybe all over the globe, but they only lived a short period of time. And what does that tell you? Why is that useful? If you find one, you know how old that rock is because they didn't live for very long. So they're useful because they can be used to determine the age of a rock layer. If I find a trilobite, I know about how old that rock layer is because they're not around anymore. And some of the species weren't around for very long. So that's how they're unique. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go to these textbook pages and We're going to look at the index fossil key. So all of these are index fossils. These brachiopods, they lived a short period of time. You see the periods. These trilobites, they lived a short period of time. And then on the next page, there's a few more index fossils. These corals, they didn't live for very long. These cephalopods and plants, and they're all gone now. Since they only lived a short period of time, they can be used to figure out how old a rock is. So I'm going to split my screen and have this on the right. And on the left, I'm going to double click on this and shrink it down a little bit. There's been, it's been a little finicky, this picture. So sorry in advance if it gives you trouble, but if you can't see it all the way, you can make it smaller. Which of course, then that messes, messes up only X's. What you're going to do is you're going to find the index fossils and put a colored X on them. So how do I do that? I have to make an X with a text box. So if I want to make a new X, I'll delete this yellow X. I have to draw a text box. See, I click on the T and I draw a text box, a little one. And then I put an X on that index fossil, which is the sponge. I want that index fossil to be a certain color. I'm going to make it yellow. And I'm going to make it bigger and bold. Okay, now I need to find the matching one. I'm only going to find the ones I can find a match to. Oh, here's the yellow X. Now I need to find where it matches. Mm, I'm gonna close this. Where's my little matching fossil? I don't see it. Do you? Oh, there it is. So now I know this matches up with this. And I gotta move these around. I can just see that these are the matching index fossils. So why are we doing this? I forgot to say. This top layer of rocks, the Zs, are from Zion National Park. This bottom B, these B layers, are from Bryce. And these layers, Kaibab, Toroweave, Coconino, Hermit Shale, these are from the Grand Canyon. So what are we doing? We're trying to figure out how these three national parks and really beautiful canyons have similar index fossils and how do they relate to each other. How, the ages of these different places. So we're using our index fossils to correlate them. Once you have that all done, you save and close. And this is going to help me with this next activity. So I have to remember which ones are the index fossils. Okay, Kaibab has a yellow index fossil, this, this one, and Z1 has that same one. So I'm going to look for Kaibab and Z1 for my next activity. So click on this online activity. 
I'm looking for Kaibab at the Grand Canyon, top layer, and Z1 at Zion, bottom layer. So if I slide this down here and slide it down, now look, I've just lined up this index fossil, the sponge, just right here, with this sponge, which is right here, Z1. Now I know that these two layers are correlated like this. The Grand Canyon obviously goes way deeper and older rocks are exposed. Zion doesn't go as deep. This is the bottom layer of the canyon at Zion. So probably these fossils are down here, but they haven't been exposed yet. Now I need to figure out how Bryce is correlated. So if I look back at my dock, I try to figure out, okay, for Bryce, I can match up B5 with Z7. Okay, where's B5? B5 needs to line up with Z7. Okay, now that's pretty good. So I control shift, window key, and I copy it. You should click on copy to clipboard. I'll see if I can snag this. Yeah, it did let me snag it, but I need to scroll down to put it in. Ooh, did that work? It did. All right, now my last step is to answer some questions about it. Um, some of these questions are tricky, but some of them are pretty doable. So were any of the layers at this canyons the same age? Do, are there any layers that line up across all three canyons? No. So that would be a no. Which rock layers contain the same index fossils at Zion and the Grand Canyon? Z1 and Kaibab. So I'll just go through and I'll match up the layers and answer the questions for the rest. Which canyon has the oldest rocks? What's the approximate age of the oldest rock layer? That's a really hard question to figure out. The oldest age of the oldest rock layer Maybe at, Kai, at Grand Canyon, you should use this, these index fossils to figure that out. So trilobites, um, if we look in their book, how old are those trilobites? They're from the Middle Cambrian. And the Middle Cambrian was about 540 million years ago. But the oldest rock layer is below that. So maybe 550 million years ago or 600 million years ago would be the oldest rock layer. So just think about that. And then the youngest rock layer, you should probably use this top one and look at the ages of these and see if you can figure that out. If you can't, it's fine. Just say, I don't know, this is too hard or Google it. All right, and then after you finish these questions, you're good to go if you want to try one of these um, activities and have some free time you can this is more optional you don't have to do this to get full, full credit on your notebook but if you do it and you want to take a screenshot of it to show me what you did that's awesome okie dokie message me if you have any questions and i'll see you next week